Well, let me tell you something. 983. If you're outside of Mumbai yeah. and you want to call, or to, as it was called Bombay those days, you want to call the Caribbean. You took up the phone in your hotel room. You spoke to the hotel operator. Yeah. The hotel operator called the Bombay operator. The Bombay operator called the London operator. And then the London operator called the operator in whichever island you are. And then that operator called your home. So if wow. any one of those links dropped, the call was dead. You had to start all over again. Wow. They may have called him whispering death when he was playing. But now, his voice is as comforting and safe as his bowling was disconcerting and dangerous. Today, I'm with the legendary West Indian fast bowler Michael Holding and I'm going to try to convince him to love T20 cricket just as much as I love it. This is not going to be easy. Greatest of your time in terms of batsmen? I.B.A. Richards. Yeah? No doubt. Sir Isaac Vivian Alexander, everybody's favourite. Like for me growing up, for me the money shot was just him walking out to bat. Chewing his gum. Give some water. Yes, water would be great. It'll be mineral water. No water for me. No water for me. Min- mineral water, please. Chill. And uh, rum for... Yeah, chill, please. <laughs> You're not very big on the liquid, are you? Water is for fish, man. <laughs> For me, the West Indian fast bowlers of the 70s, all of you, I see, if if I was making a film, I'd see you all walking in slow motion. There's a cigar, trench coat, there's a the trench coat guns. and the gun sticking out. Yeah, maybe there's a hat for one of you, you know, that's... <laughs> did you guys feel like that? Did you feel like... You guys were like the mob, like the henchmen of the mob. <laughs> <laughs> we don't, I don't think we looked at ourselves that way, but I certainly didn't. <laughs> don't get in our way, because you're no, going to well, pay. Well, the team on a whole was a confident team. You know, we figured more times than not, we had a pretty good chance of winning. But we didn't go around boasting about it. You didn't have to, because whispering death doesn't shout. <laughs> Did you have a lot of people referring to you as that when you were playing or did that happen with smart copywriting only people start calling you that towards the end? Do you remember when, I don't when remember, the first time you heard it? Not exactly. I remember the, where I was and I remember who said it to me. Yeah. But I don't remember if I was still, I think more than likely I was still playing. Yeah. And the person told me it was a guy called Paul Newman that used, used to write for the news of the world. There's another Paul Newman now who writes the Daily Mail. Okay. And he was the one who told me about this whispering death thing. I said to him, where, where did you get this whispering death? He said, you didn't know that's your nickname? I said, no. <laughs> I said, it was Dickie Bird who gave it to me. So who was the biggest challenge for you to bowl to? There's not one particular guy. You know. There were quite a few, in my opinion, great batsmen in my time. Yeah, like who? who, who did but you when know? I first started, I bowled against two chapels. Mm. They were great batsmen. And as time went on, he bowled against people like Sunil Gabaska, Graham Bush, um, Gowa, Javed Meandad, Zaire Abbas, Martin Crowe from, from New Zealand. People thought, oh, for a pass bowl, let us go to and bowl bouncers all day. People will get out. We were meticulous with our planning. And we sat down and planned opposition batsmen. The only thing we did not do a lot of our batsmen didn't plan too much against opposition bowlers. Yeah. And we bowlers used to complain about that. Yeah. And the robbers in particular used to stand up in meetings and say, okay, okay, we you know plan we plan for their batsmen. We we're not planning for their bowlers. <laughs> and then we might spend five minutes on that. And in a time where there was not too much data or analytics, yeah, it was all there. All of it. What you remembered. We had nothing to look back on. Just memory. What do you what do you think about the over-reliance on data now? Well, as you say, they're over-reliance. Anything you put over on, it means it's too much. <laughs> I have no problem with people looking back on data, and looking back on film and whatever. But when it takes over from common sense and your natural thinking, obviously it's got to be too much. So I have to tell you, I'm a... 
just like yourself. I'm a huge fan of test cricket. For me, that's the the holy grail. That's the ultimate. That's the ultimate. I maybe don't watch every ball for five days, but I always know what's happening in every session. And I said this once to somebody. I said, test cricket is like chess, and 2020 cricket is like speed chess. Test cricket is like life. You will get up one morning. Yeah. You don't feel on top of the world. Yeah. You don't do your job when wherever you work the best that you possibly can. Same thing with Test Match Cricket. Because it's five days. It doesn't mean all five days you're going to be on top of the world. Mm -hmm. A one-day game or this 2020 thing that they, they play, whatever happens that day, is that's it. There's no other day. In a Test Match, 99% of the time, the better team will win if there is a result. See, now I like that. I like, I, I like that because when you say, it's quite interesting that you say test cricket's like life. I think almost 2020 has become like what life is right now. No. Which is the wrong version of life. No, 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 that's, that's not life. No, but people who want everything instantly, yeah. instant gratification, they're not living. True. That's not living. Those you haven't you have got, you hear them say walk, stop and smell the roses. Yeah. Those people just walking past the roses. For me, nothing in magical test cricket because the better team is winning. You're, you have sessions, you have you have plays, you like setups. You see, yeah. we like stuff yeah, like that. But we're also a diminishing breed, aren't we? Of people who like for sure. and appreciate the for nuances. Sure. You know why? Because test cricket is not as entertaining now as it used to be. There's oh. too much test cricket. And there are too many games that mean nothing. For me, 2020 is like a, a blockbuster film. Right? It's a blockbuster. No. Summer blockbuster, no, fast no, and furious. A 3D, okay, a cartoon, 3D mm. glasses. It will never get nominated for an Academy Award. Oh, some cartoons do though. Not the people who act in them. Yeah, they can't. Exactly. They're not real. Exactly. Oh. Shoot it me down. But people are coming out to watch it. People go to McDonald's as well. Yeah. I ain't gonna tell my kid to go to McDonald's. Is that cool? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to convince you. I know, <laughs> yes, I'm I know just, what I'm, I'm up just against. Your <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> For me, this is a great learning as well. Is there anything at all that you think? Not like, I'm not asking if you like it because mm -hmm. it's very. Yeah, yeah. I think it's evident that. <laughs> is there anything in it that you think could be a positive? Definitely. Definitely. What the shorter forms of the game have done, 50 over now, 20 over cricket, what they have done is that they have made people's mindset change. Cricket, as I'm talking about, to be a lot more positive, a lot more aggressive. Innovative. Innovative, which then seeps back into test cricket. Because we've seen a lot more results now in test match cricket, which yeah. is great for the game. So those are big positives that, that have come out of the shorter forms of the game. I have no problem with that aspect of it at all. Yeah. Cricketers are now a lot fitter as well, but much more athletic. You're seeing some fantastic pieces of fielding and some athleticism in the shorter forms of the game now that are again slowly but surely gravitating in and getting into test cricket. So that aspect of it is fantastic. Have you been watching uh, the cricket at all? Uh, when you watch the, it? When, when the, the cricket, cricket start, is on? When it starts, I'll watch it. I haven't seen any cricket since I got here. But you're still here. A lot of people ask me this. I'm here because my wife is here, not yeah. because of whatever is happening at these cricket rooms. The things we have to do for love, right? Well, life is a compromise. <laughs> but she can't get you to the cricket ground, can she? Not while cricket is on. <laughs> I've been to the cricket ground. <laughs> yeah, but... More than one. <laughs> I love it. I'm trying to bowl these Yorkers, but you keep stepping out, turning them into full tosses and hitting them out of the park. A.B. the billiard start. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You've learned well. He must be proud of you. Would you have liked bowling at A.B.? It would have been a challenge. And, yeah. you know, if you're worth your salt, you, you welcome challenges. Yeah. Sometimes he's going to win. Sometimes you hope that you'll win. And that's basically what happens when you're a test cricketer or you're a cricketer of the highest order. It's not every day that you're going to win, whether you're a batsman or a bowler. He made the passes, 50 passes, 100 passes, yeah. 115 all in one innings. Yeah. I haven't seen anyone that can play shots in a 360 degree. 
yeah. circle like A.B. the Billiards. You know, you have always had batsmen that have been able to hit the ball all over the park and hit it big sixes. But they hit the ball in all directions, in all directions, you know, it's, which makes it pretty difficult to set a field for him. Yeah. And then makes it difficult to actually bowl to him. You go in with a plan, yes, because you have to have some sort of a plan. But it's more a plan of hope than expectations. <laughs> he just hope. Yeah, that yeah. one day he steps so far away from his wicket that he can't you reach the ball. You hope he makes a mistake. But that's the best. And you have got to be on top of your game. But he doesn't make that many. No, well, he's a great player. Yeah. Great players don't make many mistakes, otherwise they wouldn't be great. Uh, How do we get more lethal fast bowlers? Play Tell less us. cricket. Play less cricket? Yeah. Nobody can bowl fast for the amount of cricket that there are being. So you're saying, but that's that is what you're saying to preserve our current lot of fast bowlers, right? Because they all they will break down. You can't yeah. make them bowl 250 days in a year. Exactly. So you play less cricket, the fast bowlers will be able to bowl fast when they turn up. They can't turn up every day and bowl fast. You, did you see what have is bowling to to watch in the World Cup? Yeah. That was How many times have you seen what have Rias do that? Yeah. You obviously have to really upset him. To get him no, to because, do that. Not just upset him, because he can't do it. Yeah. That was a special occasion when he thought, hell, I have to get some wickets. Yeah. So he put everything in. If he was playing less cricket, he could do that on a much more regular basis. He can't turn up again next week and do the same thing and then the following week and do it. He can't. Now when you explain it like that, it makes perfect sense. Mm. I hope. No, it does. It does to me. What doesn't make sense to me is this cup. So why would you have this here? It's not very practical. It's... It's still just milk. But I believe you're, you're, not, you're not very... Uh, you're not truly Jamaican. You can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> That's saying like I'm not truly wasting there because I don't drink rum. <laughs> You don't sing or drink rum? No. Who is this imposter? <laughs> Who is this man? Check his ID. <laughs> I read somewhere that you had an interesting thing with music when you were a kid. Was it your father who really wanted you to have no, no. some music in you? Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. No? My brother. Oh. Even now, he's five years older than I am, still plays music, great musician. Do so. Both the studios in Jamaica and back up the reggae artists and that sort of thing. Mm. Formed his own band in Germany. Wow. All that sort of thing. He's musically inclined, I am not. We both went to the same school. The headmaster at the school when I arrived said to me, your brother can sing, you have got to be able to sing. <laughs> he was, his name was Douglas Forrest. I said, Mr. Forrest, I can sing, sir. He says, no, 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 come up on the stage here. You have got to be able to sing. After the first line, he patted me on the back and said, it's okay. <laughs> I think you're the, the Morgan Freeman of cricket. Everything must have a bit of narration from you. It's uh, familiar, I don't think so. it's good, and it feels comfortable. Oh, we just heard Mikey's voice. Everything's going to be all right. <laughs> it's going to be I. <laughs> <laughs> You're the Morgan Freeman of cricket broadcasting. Are you, you're talking about the modern world and apps. There's a guy in England developing an app with my voice on it. There you go. <laughs> it might just bum out, but who knows. So, it has, so it's it's a cricket app or is it? Yeah, it's going to be a cricket app. I, I wouldn't even mind your cricket. voice on Google Maps. And then you, the, when, when something goes wrong with the GPS and you crash. Oh, that Michael Holden made me crash. <laughs> and if it's an old batsman, you say, that Michael Holden made me hurt my head again. <laughs> For the second time. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much, Mikey. No, man, my, my pleasure. It no was, problem at all. It was amazing. It was good.